in our previous session we went on to speak about the aspect of vision when we were talking about increasing your value and i believe today we are going on forward to be speaking on another very much important aspect of how you can come to a place where you can increase your value Value is important as we began this series. We explained that people are paid or people are rewarded for their value. And we, we went on further to be explaining about giftings, that your gifting, you have to find a way in which you bring value to your gifting. You have to find a way in which you bring value to yourself. Many people have reduced themselves in as much as they are gifted, talented, they have reduced themselves that no matter who would want to pay them, cannot pay them because they've reduced their value. With this being said, I believe as a person, you are getting an understanding as we go forth and on this um, series and we are finalizing on it, that it is important for you to bring yourself value. I explained as we were going forward, there's a scripture that I explained. I spoke to us in the book of Ecclesiastics, there is a man who is written there. The Bible tells us about the poor wise man, a man who had wisdom. And his wisdom was used to serve the city. And the Bible tells us that the moment he saved the city, after he saved the city, he was forgotten. Irregardless of the good deeds he had done, they forgot him. It is typical of the life we live that in most times and in most cases, if you do not come to a place where you value yourself, people won't reward you the way you should be rewarded. And many gifted people have cried and complained. Why is it that I come to a place where I'm gifted, but people are not valuing me the way I should be valued? It is because you can't be valued by people, yet you do not show people how you want to be valued yourself. Am I communicating to somebody here? Yet you do not show people how you want to be valued yourself. So you have to come to a place where you value yourself. As we are going forth, you are taking out your notebook and we are talking. And I learn also in as much as you are learning as we go, as God reveals to us. I want us to go to the book of Judges. I want us to go to the book of Judges. Judges chapter number 12, 6 verse 12. Judges chapter 6, verse 12. We will be talking on a man called Gideon. Judges chapter 12, verse number 6, 6, verse 12. I don't know why I'm rushing to 12. Maybe I love Samson. All right. The Bible says, And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, Gideon. But Gideon said to him, My Lord, if the Lord is with us, then why has all this happened to us? And where are all the wondrous words which our fathers told us? When they said, did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? Did not the Lord bring us out of Egypt? Now the Lord has abandoned us and put us into the hands of the Midian. When you are reading this scripture, the Bible is talking about a man called Gideon. Gideon, who God is calling. God is calling Gideon into a mandate. God is calling Gideon for Gideon to be a mighty man, for Gideon to operate in a certain dimension of being a deliverer. But as we go through the topic that I'm talking about today, exposure, you would realize that what made Gideon to even fight the word of God was because of the things he had gone through in life. Gideon had suffered in life to an extent, to an extent whereby no matter what God was saying at that particular moment, it was impossible for him to believe. He has gone through so much bitterness, gone through so much situations that has channeled him in a certain way, captured his, his, his thinking pattern, captured his belief system that no matter how much you may speak negative or you may tell him that there is something good that can come out of him, he does not believe. This is where many people are living. This is where many people are residing. 
a place where we do not believe that there is something more that God has created us to be. So you have to understand that belief system is important, all right? Belief system is important. The belief system, what is it that you believe? It is important to live in an environment, to be exposed to environments that affect your belief system positively, not negatively. Gideon had been in this land, a land which was being besieged by the Syrians. They continuously besieged the land until it became a pattern. So belief systems, they are, they are built up by patterns, all right? Patterns and routines. They are built up by patterns and routines. The same way when the Bible tells us about Jesus, the moment when Nathaniel was told that we have found the Messiah, Nathaniel came to ask them and said, if you are saying that you found the Messiah, is there no proverb that is spoken in Israel, in, in the land of Nazareth, that can anything good come out of Nazareth? It was a proverb that was known, a proverb that was built out of what they've been exposed to a consistent way of life that they've lived to a point whereby it was not believed that nothing good can come out of Nazareth. So imagine a child being born from this environment where he grows up to believe that there is nothing good that can come out of this family. There are people that are given birth in families whereby maritally they no longer believe that there is anything good that can come out of that family. No matter how much you can preach to them, they can be prophesied, they can be told that there is something better about them. It's impossible for them to believe. Why? Because it is now the thinking pattern. It is now the thinking pattern. I believe that is why you'd realize that when you look at Apostle Paul, Apostle Paul comes in the book of Romans, all right? In the book of Romans, Chapter number one, verse two. When you read your Bible in Romans, chapter number 12, verse two, Apostle Paul brings a conversation and he tells us, do not be conformed to the things of this world. All right? Do not be conformed to this worldly or to, 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 to this world any longer with its superficial values, customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you nature as you mature spiritually be renewed in your mind focusing on godly values ethical attitudes all right ethical what attitudes positive attitudes so that you may prove for yourselves what is the will of god that which is good acceptable and perfect plan of his purpose in god you would realize that that is why many people get to a place where they get stuck. They don't believe that God can change their lives. They don't believe that God can transform their lives. They, they have gone through this vicissitudinous change that has made them to believe that there is nothing that can be spoken of them that is positive. There is nothing that can be spoken of them that is positive. So expose yourself to environments environments that can challenge you to be better, environments that can change your mind. Make sure that every day there is a progressive change in your mind. All right? All right. So you understand that your thinking pattern or your mind, all right, your mind would determine, your mind, your mind would determine your actions. All right? Your actions would determine your routines. All right, your returns will determine your days, and your days will determine your years. Your years will determine your your your, your, your destiny. Between between your actions and routines, that is where your character is built in. So your mind has got to be protected from environments. Gideon was told, "You are a mighty man of valor." Gideon said, "How can it be? How can you say?" But I'm a mighty man of valor. How can you say that I'm a mighty man of valor? I know where I'm coming from. I know what I've been through. I know what I've been exposed to. 
If you have never been exposed to wealth, it's impossible for you to believe that anybody can be wealthy. It's impossible. I always tell people of a story um, when I was in a taxi and while I was in a taxi, something happened while we were in a taxi. Mm. There, there was a, a child, two, two mothers, you know, who had their children and we, we were eating ice cream at the back. Then another child began to cry for the ice cream and the other child was quiet. And the mother with the child who was quiet said, you see, my child does not cry for ice cream. That, that was it. My child does not cry for ice cream. And I believe when she said it, she was very proud that, you know, my child does not cry for ice cream. And after some time now, the Holy Spirit began to minister to me. And I took it as a message. I even preached about it. And even to us, I believe I preached about it some time. The reason why the child, did not cry for ice cream is because the child had never been exposed to the ice cream. If the child knew how good, how tasty, how delicious the ice cream was, the child would have cried. This is an example. This is an example of a lot of people. Most of the things you do not desire in life, it is because you have not been exposed to them. The reason why you do, not, you do not desire to be prosperous. You have not been exposed to an environment of prosperity. The reason why you, 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 you have no hunger to come to a place where you can be, you, you know, you, you, can, you, you, can, you can say, I'm operating in a wealthy zone. You have not been exposed. So we, we cannot blame you for not crying for things you are not exposed to. So be transformed. Be transformed. Study to show yourself approved. Exposure is important. The limitation of you and what you desire is your exposure. The limitation of you and succeeding and, uh, you know, expanding your vision, it's exposure. You know, everyone starts with a vision. What makes a vision to be small is what you're exposed to. When you travel to places and you get exposed to certain informations, you expose yourself to certain groups of people, to a certain clique of people. You expose yourself even by traveling. You see a vision being, being, expand, being expanded. If you've only grown up in your township location, you, you just want to open a business or a shop that will affect that location. The moment you travel to other nations, that is when in your mind you start saying, I want to have a multimillionaire company. I want to have a, you know, a multi-billion company. I want to have a, a company that will, you know, travel to nations. It is exposure. Exposure expands you, all right? Exposure expands you. Exposure expands you. If you are not exposed there is no way you can be expanded. <laughs> if, if you are not exposed, there is no way you can, exp you can be expanded. It needs somebody who is exposed to something at least. For you to get to a place where you can be expanded, you need to be exposed. But if you are not exposed, you can't be expanded to anything. Is somebody understanding? I want you to, to just look at somebody and say, you need to be exposed for you to be expanded. All right. Let us go, let us take our Bibles, let us take our Bibles to the book of 1 Samuel chapter number 30. The Bible tells us about David, a time when David was, you know, the Bible says worthless men, men that were poor, men that had nothing, gathered and they began to submit to David. Now, as you read, as, as, as you go on reading this story, th there are striking revelations that are revealed right there. When they were raiding, everybody was happy. When they were raiding, everybody was happy because they were gaining wealth. Remember, these were poor people that David began to lead because he was running away from, uh, from Saul. But the Bible begins to tell us something. The Bible begins to tell us that 
it, it came to a time when they arrived back after a certain raid and everything they had was besieged. Everything they had was taken from them. Everything they believed they had, it had been taken from them. And one of the things that surprises me while they were in this zone, I want you to look at this. <laughs> while they were in this zone, the Bible begins to declare that they got angry and they started, they were distressed and they wanted to stone David. The reason why they wanted to stone David is because these men took David as their leader. Consistently, they believed David had solutions. But at this point, it was the first time they were exposed to a side where David did not have solutions. For the first time, they were exposed to a side where David did not have solutions. So the Bible says they, they thought of stoning David. You have been leading us. We have been following you. But why is it that at this stage, you have no solution for us? Have you ever been to, into, into an environment where it is a new environment, you know, an environment where you are only surrounded by people, people that celebrate you, people that see you as a hero, people that see you as this great person who can never be stranded, people that see you as this great person who can never come to a place where things can be tough for you. Have you ever been exposed to that environment? And things do not go the way they wanted things to go. And at that point, you start seeing another side. That's why I always say, surround yourself with people that can stretch you. It is very bad to always be surrounded by people that you, you, you perform greater than them. Because you become content. You, you are no longer exposed to being challenged. You, you, are, you, you become content being surrounded by people that are always clapping hands for you. Everything you do, they are clapping hands. Oh, you are great. You are doing great things. Oh, this is big. Oh, this is mighty. They, you are not surrounded to an environment of people who will be telling you, so what do you think you are doing? Do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> when people will be telling you, so, so do, do you think you have really done more than enough? What do you think you are doing? The moment you get to be exposed to an environment with such people, you, you, you start thinking to say, you, you, your mind starts start stretching. I thought I was better. Because the greatest enemy of success is your past achievement. So exposing yourself to environments of people that are doing better than you, it brings you, it brings that drive again. What energizes a person is knowing that I'm, I, I'm, I'm operating beyond my ability. Oh, look at your neighbor and say, surrounding yourself with people that always are celebrating and people that do better than you limits your creativity. Your creativity dies. All right? Creativity dies. Your creativity dies. You know, your creativity dies. And when your creativity dies, you are now in that zone where you become stuck. Stuck. You are doing a business. You are trying to develop your gift. You can't develop it because you are now with astounded growth. What makes many people to be stuck is because of being in an environment that does not inspire you. Imagine everybody at that point, they wanted David to be the solution. But at this time, David does not have a solution. So the next thing they're thinking, let's stone this guy. Why is he not bringing solutions? Why is he not bringing solutions? And imagine at that point, even you, you are stuck. You don't know what to do. You don't know what to do. I, I've been to in, in that environment. And you are now stuck. Your creativity goes because you are in an environment that does not inspire you. That does not challenge you. Am I communicating to somebody? Am I communicating to somebody? So you need to be in that place 
when you read your Bible in the book, let's go to the book of Second Kings. When you read your Bible in the book of Second Kings, the Bible tells us of a story, a story of a man called Elijah. The Bible says Elijah had his servant, and this servant he had followed him for a very long time. This is the, the reason why you need mentors. It's, it is the very same thing that happened here. That happened here. The Bible says that Jairus woke up in the morning and he went out and he saw that the whole city, the whole country was surrounded by an army. And as much as it was surrounded by an army, he was afraid because everybody is afraid of, of their life. So he, 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 he said to the master, he, he woke up the master and said, Master, we, I think we are in trouble. I don't know what we are going to do, but I believe we are in trouble here. We, we are in trouble. And the master woke up. And I love how the, the man of God, you know, dealt with the matter. The man of God looked at him and the man of God looked at him and said, there is a place or a dimension, guys, that you do not know. More are those that are with us than more that are with them. Most of the times, the problem that we do is, we do not surround ourselves with people that do better than us. So what, what happens is when challenges come, because we are not exposed to another place, another environment, another dimension, we are quick to, to you know, we are quick to panic. The reason why you panic is because you don't know the other side. That is the reason why you panic. Many people panic because you are at the other side of the wall. You don't know what is on the other side. So you are panicking. You, you, are, you are in that place where you are curious. How am I going to feed my children tomorrow? How am I going to build my business tomorrow? How am I going to come to a place where I can be, you know, my, my gifting can, can be profitable tomorrow? You are at that place. But if you surround yourself with people that can mentor you, if you surround and expose yourself to people, people that know what you do not know, because anyone who does what you cannot do knows something you do not know. So if you can surround yourself with that type of people, with such a group of people, what happens? You see yourself doing better than what you are doing now. Abu says, Elisha took gas, prayed for him, and said, Lord, open the eyes of the young man. Are you seeing what exposure does? Being exposed to people that are connected. Elijah, Elisha was connected to a realm. Elisha was connected to, we, we can take God as a person, to a person who Gehazi had no reach to. They had no reach to. So you see Elijah saying, Open the eyes of this young man. Because whatever we are trying to speak about, he does not know. He needs us to expose him. So can you open his eyes? <laughs> can you open his eyes? It happens in many different dimensions. Can you open his eyes? And the Bible says the eyes of the young man were was open. And he saw there were chariots that were surrounding Elijah. Why Elijah? Listen, they were both of them. The chariots were surrounding Elijah, not him. That you are close to a great person does not bring a difference until you start learning from that person. Until you start learning from that person. Many people are surrounded by great people, but they are not willing to learn. So they are not exposed to new information. So you see that their, their level of growth is still the same. Their level of success is still the same. Their level of, of speed is still the same. Why? Because they are not exposed to new information. It's not, a, it's not just about being connected to great people. No. Ask questions. Learn. All right? Be willing to learn. Be willing to learn. Learn. Get yourself into a place where if you see someone who's doing better than you, humble yourself. I want to learn how you do what you do. Humble yourself. I, I, I want to do the things you do. How do I do it? How do I do it? 
and you see a person starting to tell you, okay, if you want to do what I do, you will do this. If you want to do what I do, you will do this. Praise God. And lastly, we want to speak on an aspect of what experience does, what exposure does to a person. Look at gentlemen say, no one shall ever say to me again, can anything good come out of Nazareth? Now, let us go to the book of 1 Samuel chapter number 17, verse 33. The Bible says, And so say to David, You are not able to go against the Philistine to fight him, for you are only a young man, and he has been a warrior since his youth. Are you seeing this? You are only a young man. This man you want to fight has been a warrior since his youth. He has been a warrior. So what are you trying to do, David? Are you, are you trying to commit suicide? Here is a valid question. But I want you to look at the response of David. All right? But David said to Saul, your servant was tending his father's flock, his father's sheep. When a lion and a bear came out to, what? to take out the flock, I went out after it. I attacked it. I rescued the lamb from its mouth. And when it rose up against me, I seized it. And I see I, I, I seized its whisker and, and, and struck it and killed it. Oh God. Your servant has killed both a lion and a bear. And this uncircumcised Philistine will be like one of them, since he has taunted and defiled the armies of the law. I wanted to look at David's boldness. And David said, I wish I should come back with this, the God who rescued me from the paws of the lion and from the paws of the bear will rescue me from the hand of this Philistine. And so said, go and may you, may the Lord be with you. Go and may the Lord be with you. So he's saying that I, I'm talking to a different person. The person I'm talking to right now is a person who is a history with God, is a person who is an experience with God. When you get to be exposed to different environments, when you get to be exposed to different dimensions, the way you operate changes, the way you do things changes because you are now operating from confidence. All right, exposure builds confidence. Exposure builds confidence. Exposure builds confidence. When you become exposed, your confidence grows. When you become exposed to certain environments, imagine if you fight someone and you win. The next thing you know, whoever will come, I will use the same confidence to fight that person. So many people, the reason why when you look at their business, they cannot charge certain amounts is because they are not exposed to that environment. They are not exposed to that certain clientele. Someone will remain selling goods and buying goods that are worth a dollar because they are exposed. You, you hear a person saying, no, I, I'm good with this market. This is what I know. Even if you try to, you know, to, to expose them to a different market that can pay better, they'll tell you, no, I'm used to this market. What you want to expose me to is too big for me. I'm, I want to do what I know. Don't, don't expose me to things that I do not know. I've, I've met a lot of people who, you know, who, who, who speak like that. You have to come to a place where you know. You have to come to a place where you understand that be, when it comes to exposure, you can only be confident to an environment you're exposed to. I believe that as we have been going through this series, somebody's life has been transformed. I believe as we have been talking, you have seen yourself getting to a place where wisdom, understanding has grown in you and your value, your understanding of value is changing. 
your wisdom is being imparted to you. And I pray for you in the name of Jesus that the Lord comes to a place where he brings you to, and exposes you to environments that will bring you to be better. I pray that may your mind be transformed. May you get to be that person who is going to see themselves operating from a different, a, a different and a better clientele. I pray, be thee transformed, be thou transformed in the name of Jesus. Be transformed by the power of the resurrected Christ. May God send you people that will change your life. May God send you people that are willing to transform your life. People that will help you to achieve your dream. People that will help you to becoming a better person. People that will help you to be good and better than what you are. I decree it and I declare it by the power of the Holy Ghost. You are not a failure in Jesus mighty name your value is increasing wherever you shall put wherever you shall give your services I see you being rewarded better and better in the name and the blood of Jesus may God bless you may God be with you and may the Lord touch and transform your life I wanted to tell somebody that God is increasing me a thousand times more look at somebody mention them by name Take them right there and tell them that God is increasing you a thousand times more. I love you. God bless you. God be with you. Let me see you on the other side. You are blessed. See you at the top because the bottom is too crowded. You are blessed.